I and my students and uh, collaborators are interested in trying to understand how the brain responds to a stimulus. Now to work on this problem, we need to use a lot of statistics. We think of brain signals as time series data, and our goal is to uh, be able to use time series methods to understand how the brain regions communicate with each other. And for this, we develop new tools uh, based on vector autoregressive models and also based on spectral approaches where we decompose every signal into different oscillations and then we look at how an oscillation in one signal can impact activity of oscillations in another signal. Uh, so here, this is the spectral approach to modeling dependencies between different brain regions. The statistics is being used to actually understand and model how a rat's brain can respond to certain types of events, such as a stimulus or a stroke, or as a rat makes a decision on how to choose between different choices. Suppose, for example, a rat has to choose between uh, a nose poke, which has a uh, low risk, low reward type of an outcome, and the rat can also choose another nose poke, which has a high risk, high reward type of an outcome. And so we'd like to understand whether brain signals, in fact, can predict how a rat makes decisions in, in these settings. The two biggest challenges in this experiment are, first, to predict the decision made by these rats based on information that we get from the brain signals, information like brain connectivity, and second, the high dimensionality of the data from these brain signals. And this is where techniques like stationary subspace analysis can be useful in not only reducing the dimension of the data, but also in improving the prediction performance in these experiments. In my own research uh, group, uh, both when I was at UC Irvine Statistics and now at KAUST, uh, we have a group of students with whom uh, we collaborate with a number of our um, neuroscientist uh, colleagues. Uh, so the nature of our collaboration is such that the neuroscientists would come to us with these open scientific questions, and then I and my students try to understand what exactly um, are the, the goals. Uh, so for example, trying to find out whether or not brain connectivity can be predictive of how a rat uh, responds to some kind of a stroke therapy. And so my students and I, we develop new models, new methods, we test them out uh, using a number of simulations. And we present our results um, through, of course, posters, uh, presentations, and through our papers. And our goal is not only to develop new methods, make sure that they are rigorous, they are statistically rigorous, and that they've been vetted with numerous and extensive simulations, but also to package them in a way that the neuroscientists can actually understand and interpret what we're doing. And moreover, to increase impact of our work, we include toolbox development uh, as, part of our, uh, as part of our research.